So here's a trig problem that says use the given information and complete the problem. We want to find the sine of A minus B. So there's formulas for this and there's identities for some the sine of A minus B and the formula for this is that it equals the sine of A times the cosine of B uh, minus the sine of B cosine of A. So you got to memorize these or have them, sometimes teachers let you just have keep, keep them, like have a cheat sheet or something like that. So they're telling us that the sine of A is 4 fifths. So any, where you, anytime you see a sine of A, just write 4 fifths in. And that it's in the first quadrant, right? It's telling us A is in the first quadrant, which is going to help us to find the cosine of A. Right? Because if it's in the first quadrant, here's A. And it said the sine is 4 fifths. Sine is the opposite. Oops, whoops. This isn't 5, it's 4. The opposite would be 4 over the hypotenuse, which is 5. And so this is a 3, 4, 5. So we know the cosine is 3 fifths. Got it? And the, it tells you that the cosine is in the second quadrant. So that's here. And here's B. So B is in the cos sorry, sorry, B is in the second quadrant. And the cosine is negative twelve. So this is negative twelve adjacent is negative twelve. And the hypotenuse is thirteen. So this is a five twelve thirteen? This is a five twelve thirteen, so it's positive. So the sine of B is positive five over thirteen. So we're gonna use all those things and write them straight in here. So the cosine of B is negative 12 over 13, and the, and the sine of B is 5 over 13, and the cosine of A is 3 over 5. So you're just doing the math now. So simplify before you complicate. Notice that the, um, actually sometimes in this case you don't want to simplify because if I canceled the fives out here, then I wouldn't have a common denominator anymore. And see how nothing can cancel out here? <laughs> so actually, I don't want to cancel those things out because then I'll lose my common denominator. My common denominator is 5 times 13, which is 65. So I've got 4 times negative 12, which is negative 48, minus 15 over 65. So that equals negative 63 over 65. And that is your answer. That's the sine of A minus B. Whatever the A, whatever A is and whatever B is, the sine of that is going to be negative 65, 63 over 65. So for the cotangent one, you do the same thing with a different formula. So now you don't have a cotangent formula. I'm sure they exist, but your, your teacher's not showing that to you. So you're going to have to rewrite this cotangent as... Remember, cotangent is the same as 1 over the tangent of A plus B. Whatever that tangent of that is, is what, is what we have. So the tangent formula, which actually, I see the formula now, we can just reciproc we can just flip it over. So the tangent of A, so this is 1 over the tangent of A plus B formula is tan A plus tan B all over 1 minus tan A tan B. So it actually happens to be a big fraction. So dividing by that just is going to give us what? I can just flip that over, right? Because because that's a compound fraction. I can just flip that. So really this just equals 1 minus the tangent of A tangent B all over tan A plus tan B. Okay, follow? So really what we need is the tangent of A and the tangent of B. Well, we have those over here, almost. What's the tangent of B? Remember, our, my, my, that was in the second quadrant, so it's going to be negative. And what's the tangent? It's opposite. So your opposite was negative 12. 
over adjacent. Whoops, nope, that, that's wrong. Remember the remember my picture? Here was B right here. And it was the cosine is negative twelve over thirteen. So that's thirteen and that's negative twelve. So this is five. So what's the tangent of B? Five negative five twelves. Got it? And what's the tangent of A? It's opposite over adjacent, 4 over 3. So just plug those straight in. So this equals 1 minus the tan A is 4 thirds. The tan B is negative 5 twelfths all over uh, 1 all over the tan of A, which is 4 fifths. I'm sorry, it's not 4 fifths, it's 4 thirds. 4 thirds plus tan B, which is negative 5 twelfths. Now we just have a big old mess that we have to deal with, right? So this is where it's really good if you know the tricks of clearing fractions. You remember how to clear fractions? Multiply everything by the least common denominator on the top and the bottom. It'll make your life a lot easier. What's the least common denominator? It's actually 12. Because 3 is a factor of 12. So why am I doing You don't have to do this, but it makes your life easier. Why am I multiplying everything by 12? Because when I do that, I'm going to get much simpler fraction to deal with. So this is 12. 1 times 12 is 12. Minus... Um, actually, it doesn't quite... Tw I, I probably should have multiplied by 36, but actually, it'll, it'll probably work itself out. Because the 12 is going to only cancel right here. It's not going to also cancel with the 3, because that's in the same factor. Right? So I'm actually going to get minus negative 20 over 3. It's okay. If I need to multiply by 3 in a second, I'll do that as well. All over, what happens when I multiply this 12 by 4 thirds? The 3 and the 12 cancel, you get 4 times 4, which is 16. Minus 5, the 12's cancel, then you get minus 5. Okay, so this equals 12 plus 20 thirds all over 11. Now you can multiply by 3 again, by the, you know, to clear that fraction if you want to. Multiply the 3 on the top and bottom. So this equals, remember you got to multiply it to both of them. So that's 36, I'll write it over here, 36 plus 20 is on the top and 33 is on the bottom. So 56 over 33, which does not simplify anymore. So 56 over 33, that's the exact cotangent of A plus B. Okay, and then the last one, cosine of 2a, there's a formula for the double angle. The cosine of 2a equals the cosine squared of a minus, minus or plus, minus the sine squared of a. That's actually pretty easy because we already have those values. What's the cosine squared of a? Cosine of a is 3 fifths. So we're squaring that minus the sine of A. I'm sorry, sine. Oh yeah, this is just A. It's not even dealing with B. What's the sine squared of A? Four fifths. Or the sine of A is four fifths, so we square it. So that equals nine twenty-fifths minus sixteen twenty-fifths, which equals negative seven twenty-fifths. That one was easier. So that's C.